Um, what's good, Boom Crew? It's your girl Annie Boom Fanny, and this is my truth. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. If I get a little low, it's because probably somebody's walking by and I don't want them all in my business. Y'all know this one, though. Um, today's video is brought to you by Hugo de Coco. I'm lying, bitch. I just like this. This ain't no fucking sponsor video, bitch. I ain't got enough subscribers for that. And some motherfucking water. Guys, I ain't gonna hold y'all. This is gonna be a long video. So if you don't got time to watch it, go about your business. Come back when you got time. This is the story of Dark and Lovely. Um, I should have put some eyebrows on for this. Anyway, I'm procrastinating because I don't want to tell y'all. I do not want to give y'all a fucking tea on this. But I need to. Because I don't think none of y'all are really under the impression that me and Dark and Lovely is like in a perfect situation or anything like that. I haven't talked about him that much or even shown much of him. But I'm in a space where I feel like I know what to do, but I don't want to do it. Now, I am going to be rambling in this video. Uh, I probably am going to be jumping from here to there because I have so much that I want to say that I just need to get out. I've tried. I've recorded a dark and lovely video, no lie, y'all, about five times. And I deleted it each fucking time. But this time. I'm going to give you a fucking tea. In this case the coconut juice. So. Let me tell you something. That I've noticed about myself. I attract. Men. Who. Who are squares you know like the dude that just goes to work he works hard he's probably not the most popular guy he could be extremely attractive or average looking um i do at attract men who have careers i'm not the type you won't ever hear me or i've never really been except for like very few occasions in my life the type of person who dated the thug type or something like that. So I attract. I'm saying all of that to say this. I attract the nice guy. This 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 um, so-called nice guy that finishes last thing, right? So when people say, "Oh, girls don't give the nice guy a try," that's a fucking lie. I I I'm legit one of people. I I give the nice guy a try. He never finishes last with me. But bitch. These motherfuckers is about to be eliminated, okay? Nice men. Nice men. Are probably the most egotistical, narcissistic, sadistic, trauma-filled, arrogant people you can come across. And I'm going to explain that in regards of Dark and Lovely. So, when I first started to talk to Dark and Lovely, I told you guys see me going out with him. Um, you saw a few clips where I'm smiling and I'm laughing. This is that and the third. But one thing I immediately noticed about Dark and Lovely is that he always, always has to mention his accomplishments, his work, his parents, and his past relationships. You're going to see where I'm going with this, right? So in the beginning, I'm thinking, you know when you first meet somebody, 
you think that they they give more information that they need to because maybe number one maybe they're nervous or maybe, number two maybe they feel that they need to divulge certain information because you're in the just getting to know each other stage so you might be like you might meet a guy he tells you one thing about his ex-girlfriend he tells you this about his childhood and then later on in the relationship you notice that the person don't tell you as much stories or as much experiences blah 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 right so in my head when we first started talking I just associated him being so self-absorbed with the fact that we just met and maybe he just wants to tell me this information but as time went on I noticed that every single thing we talked about and I'm saying we lightly because it's really him was pertaining to his job he's a correction officer um, he would talk about the academy if he was talking about a life experience it was always something about what he knows and um an ex-girlfriend that did this to him or said this to him or the fact that his mother did this or said this to him when he went home or his father did this or said this to him when he went home he still lives with his parents okay um according to him he's saving up for a house which is believable because I know somebody who just got a house. They MTA worker. They make a lot of money. And they lived with their parents for a decent amount of time. He just got a five bedroom house. So I, I don't hold that against you. You got a decent job. And I know y'all going to hear the cat. I put sis in the bathroom because y'all know she be going crazy. So anyway. So I never held that against him. Right. But. Okay. Back to the conversations. So. I noticed that a lot of my life and a lot of relationships that I've formed with people, whether it be friendship or any uh, a relationship with a man, I noticed that people will pour their fucking hearts out to me, right? I just have this sponge uh, type of personality, like when you actually really get to know me. I just have this sponge type of personality. I have to absorb everybody's energy. I have to listen to everybody's fucking problem. But the minute I go to talk about something that interests me. Or a childhood experience. Or a situation. Or whatever. The response is never a genuine response from a good amount of people in my life. That I've dealt with or are currently in my life. It's always like oh wow. A kick kick kick. And then back to them. So, he would do that. When it came in regards to my bags, when it came in regards to talking about friendships or past relationships or childhood experiences, it was always like, his response was always like, okay, are you done talking? Type of, he wouldn't say that, I'm saying, but you know somebody's demeanor, so they can get back to them. So... Um, he had or has, well, he had because he, he, he's been improving on it. He had this bad habit of comparing me to other women. So I'm going to tell you about this one time, right? Do I want to tell you about that one time first or another time? I'm going to tell you about this one time. This is not the first argument we got into, but I'm going to tell you about this one time. So... Y'all know that I wasn't trying to have uh, sex with Dark and Lovely, right? Um, so, one day he came to my house. He was supposed to be at my house maybe about 11 o'clock. No, 11 o'clock. What the fuck? He was supposed to be uh, by my house at 8 o'clock, right? So, it was like 7.20. So, mind you, Dark and Lovely was never the type to be exactly on time but he would always come and he would always come around the time that he said he was gonna come so if he said he was gonna be here eight he probably would get here 8 20. so when it was 7 20 and he didn't text me to tell me that he was on his way i was a little like you know something's up so i i had a uh, text i had called him so i called him and i say hey what's up what's up with you where you at he's like oh i'm on my way to go see my uncle I said, you on your way to go see your uncle? I said, um, what happened to you coming over here? So he was like, uh, what happened? He was like, oh, I was going to tell you. 
So I said, you was going to tell me what? Like, spit it out. So he's like, oh, I was going to tell you that I, I was going to be running late. I said, when was you going to tell me that? Because I'm the one that just called you. He goes, my bad. So I said, okay. So I had texted him back and I was like, um, forget it. Don't come over. I'm going out with a friend. Lie my ass off. So he was like, oh, um, you and your friend want to come over here and meet meet me by he told me where he was right so now bitch i'm like the fuck i'm gonna go, go over there with an imaginary friend i was like nah i'm gonna catch you another day blah 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 trying to be shady as fuck so now it hits like nine something ten o'clock or something like that he's like oh i'm done um where you at are you home or whatever whatever so i was like um no not yet or some shit like that long story short he got to my house like a, around 11 o'clock so he comes over and this dude what did we initially start arguing about oh I was like oh could you um come in the um, bathroom with me while I take a shower so I'm taking a shower and while I'm in the shower, I said to him, I was like, oh, you, um, what did I say? I didn't say it nasty or anything like that. He was like, I was like, oh, you kind of rude. I was like, you ain't even asked me if I need anything before you came over. You know how somebody coming over to your house and they, they'd be like, oh, do you need anything? Do you need me to stop at the store? Right? So he didn't do that. So he was like, oh, I don't have to do that. I don't live here, blah, blah, blah. So his response was so nasty that now I'm going to be nasty because... You can't tell people how to act or what to say, but it would have been nice for him to say, well, next time I'll do it, or do you actually need something? I'll run out and go get it. It's not a problem. That's how you diffuse a situation instead of making it worse, right? No, not dark and lovely. If you're fire, he's gas, bitch. So he goes, so I say, well, if you want to come to my house again, you got to go. You're you, you, you going to have to offer something, motherfucker. So that's what I say, right? Mind you. I wasn't 100% serious, but his response was so nasty. Now I'm fucking fluffing up my chest because you're not going to be sitting here talking to me like that. So he like, um, what did he say? Well, I'm not doing that. You can't tell me what to do. Blah, blah, blah. He was getting real like, so I'm like, he like, oh, you keep playing. I'm going to spin off. I'm going to spin off. Like leave, basically, like get in his car and leave. Hold on. Cause this ain't even the fucking juice, y'all. This ain't even the fucking cherry on top. <sighs> y'all know once I do that. <laughs> so I'm in the shower. I'm fucking foaming at the mouth. So we, I get out the shower, whatever. I got little booty shorts on and, and a little halter top or whatever. <laughs> so. He's mad, but he ain't leaving. So when he said, oh, I'm going to spin off, I'm going to spin off. I said, ain't nobody holding a fucking gun to your head. I said, if you want to leave, you can leave. He one of them people that be acting like he going to leave and never leave. Nigga, <laughs> bye. Okay? So what happened? Um, damn, I forgot what I was about to say. But anyway, we, come in a, we, we sit in the living room and we still going at it, right? Well, I sit on one couch, he sit on another couch. My couches are like, um, not per yeah, perpendicular to each other. So I sit on the edge of one couch, he's sitting on the other couch. So we going back and forth or whatever. Um, and finally it cools down, it settles down, but I feel away. So he's like, oh, um, what did he say? He was like, oh, I need a massage or whatever. So in my head... I'm like, oh, you need a massage. <laughs> oh, I got you. I got you, boo-boo. So I get up and I give him a massage. So I, get, I give him um, the massage. So he like, oh, you want to go in the room? Mind you, this at this point, we didn't have sex. So I'm like, oh, we're going to go in the room. I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this shit. So we, he goes in the room. There's something that I'm missing. Uh, that I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I'll remember it later. 
Yeah, there's something that I'm missing out of the story. I can't fucking remember. My brain has been off lately. But anyway, so he goes in the room and I'm doing something out here. So I go in the room. <laughs> I can't even believe I'm about to tell you this shit. I go in the room. I open my bedroom door. Dark and lovely. It's not called dark and lovely for no reason. He has the most deepest, beautiful skin complexion you could possibly imagine, right? So I go in my room. This black ass motherfucker is bent over, taking off his socks or his shoes or whatever. And I see nothing but ass. Nothing but ass, right? So I say to myself, why the fuck am I seeing ass, but you still got your boxers on? Y'all, hold on. I'm going to show you what the fuck I'm talking about. <sighs> oh my God. What is my life about? <laughs> yeah, I got tears in my eyes. I have real fucking tears in my eyes. This man is bent over, right? This is just some uh, leftover fabric. This is his boskas. The back of his boskas and the middle of his boskas is blown out, bitch. I'm, this is a nice version of what I'm showing you. This ain't even boskas, but this is how shredded. This mother, it looked like a fucking T-Rex saw this man bending over the tie of his shoe and said, fuck it that. I was like, so I went in the room. I start breaking, bitch. I went into mother mode, okay? Because that's like me seeing my son with some fucking boskas on. And he knew better to put them fucking boskas on. I went, I said, what the fuck is that you got on? So he like, oh, I forgot. I just picked these up and I threw them on my, my uh, I mean, um, ah, 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 this is that and the third. I was like, you forgot? You just put those you might as well have not put no fucking drawers on. I said, this is what I said to him. I said, you riding around in a fucking BMW M3 and you got fucking holy ass drawers on, nigga? What the fuck is that? So I'm breaking. <laughs> I'm breaking, y'all. I'm going the fuck off. Because I cannot believe this nigga with this big ass ego had the nerve. To come to a hood bitch like me, my house, with this mouth, and think that he was gonna get away with wearing them fucking drawers. Who I don't know who you thought you were, boo boo. Mm. Hold on. That this is nothing. What I'm telling you is nothing, guys. It doesn't stop. With the dinosaur attack drawers. It does not stop there, boo boo. So, he take all his stuff off. You might as well have left your boxes on. Because, nigga, it was nothing there. I'm not even joking. Y all, y all, there's one thing for a man. You, you see a man, he got, like, a, his undershirt has a hole or something like that. It's got Maybe the moth chewed through. I'm not joking. If I can't... Picture a butt right here like this, like and you 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 renting M threes, BMWs, riding around, thinking you're the shit? Mm. So he take all his clothes off. So now his black ass getting to bed. I could barely fucking see him, bitch, because the light is off. So I'm giving him a massage. And I'm in my head. The first thing I thought, <laughs> I'm telling my friends, bitch. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I didn't run and tell my friends because that's fucking petty. But he be acting too. I, I'm on his high horse. He act like a Sagittarius man to the fucking T, bitch. He is on a high horse. He is all that to him. So now we in the room. He wants this massage. He naked. I said, 
So I give him a massage. So he's trying to turn over, trying to get it popping. So I'm like, um, what is you doing? He like, well, you know, <laughs> no. The fuck you thought? You thought we was going to have the argument we just had? You was gonna act the way you did, and that you was gonna get enough nut off me? Oh, I'll wait till you got it out. I'll wait till it's rock hard, and I will start my shit. Okay? So he's sitting there. I said, "We not having sex." I said, "You you about to have blue balls?" He was like, "What do you mean?" So I had said something. I said, "Oh, you gonna be hard, and you're not gonna get no nut." So then he asked, I forgot, I think he asked, I think he asked for head. So I said, bitch, I was even going to go as far as giving him head. And when I thought he was about to knock, I was going to stop, bitch. When I say I would torture your soul, I will fucking torture your soul. So he said, so I didn't get a chance to go that far, right? So he says to me. Why would you do that? I said, because I told you we're not having sex. We're not doing none of that. So he get mad. He gets up. Thing out of focus. All right. Enough with the small talk by my window. Everybody want to be polite today. What about your fucking business? Hold on. Sorry. But anyway. So now he get up, he get mad. He was like, Oh, I'll go to the store for you, that's not the problem, blah blah blah. I'll give you this and I'll get Oh you you talking with your dick. So I'm sitting there, I'm calm as a fucking cucumber, bitch. I'm cool as a cucumber. I'm I'm sitting there, I'm like What you want me to do? You thought that you was gonna come over here super late. When you were supposed to be here at 8 o'clock, you fuck that up. Then you come over here and you start talking your fucking shit. And you thought that you was going to get some wet wet? Oh, nigga, get the fuck out of here. So, he getting up, he putting on his shit or whatever. So, now me, um, I'm, I'm calm at this point. So, I had told him we had gotten into an argument previous to this. And I told him to stop comparing me to his ex-girlfriends. Uh, oh, that's what I was um, missing. I'm going to tell you the other arguments. But I, I specifically wanted to tell you this one. So I said, um, stop comparing me to your other girlfriends. This was in a, a previous argument that we had gotten. So while he's talking to me, he does it again. So, bitch, I went from laying down on the bed. Cool. I jumped up so fucking fast. You know how you, you getting so amped that you, you start doing this because this is going to turn into this. So, I'm, because I, I, I told him, I said, if you do it again, me and you will never ever talk again. Simple, simple, because I had said to him, whatever issues you have with your mother, I cannot fix. Whatever issues you have with past girlfriends, I cannot fix. Whatever trauma you got going on in your life, I cannot fix. I cannot help you unless you want to help yourself. Yes, I do believe that you're supposed to get with somebody that ain't supposed to help you through certain things as much as they could, but not at the expense of their own mental health and not at the expense of depleting energy from them. So you will not do that to me. I'm not your fucking psychiatrist. Hell, I'm barely your fucking girlfriend. So I had told him to stop doing that. So when he did it again, that shit got me so fucking hyped. So even at that point, I was about to black on him, but I didn't. So, he's sitting there. It's like 1.30 in the morning. The nigga tight because his dick hard and he can't get a fucking nut. That's really what it's about. So, he's sitting there acting like he gonna leave. Looking stupid booping. So, I said, you know what? I turned off my hallway light with his stupid ass standing there. I went to my room. I laid down to calm myself down. Because you're not about to get me out of uh, character. Nigga, turn that copyright off. Hold on. So, um, he's standing there. I told you, he's one of them people acting like he gonna leave. Like you're supposed to chase him down. This is how 
self-indulged he is. So how grandiose he is. How egotistical. How so full of himself that he thinks that if he threatens to leave, that you're supposed to strap onto the bottom of his fucking leg and beg him not to. You got me fucked up. So, um, he don't leave. He come back in the room. He sit on the edge of the bed. So for like 30, 40 minutes, he's sitting there watching some video. I'm laying down, bitch. I'm about to go to sleep. He was like, oh, could you walk me out the door? This is down the third. So I walk him to the door. I open the door. He's standing there looking at me like, he was like, oh, um, can I get a hug? I look right past him like, are you want to leave or not? I ain't say it, but I just look right past him like, could you go? The fuck? So, he leaves. I slam the fucking door, bitch. I slammed the door so hard, I blew that nigga to his car. Car door was open, waiting for the nigga. That's how hard I slammed the fucking door. So, the next day comes. And that was one of the biggest arguments we had. Because before that... Before that, we had gotten to, like, small arguments. But, it, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't make a big, big deal out of it. Or whatever. So the next day comes. He calls me in the morning. Now one thing about Dark and Lovely is. If you get into a major argument with this man. It don't matter how bad it was. He will always call. And he will always text. And I don't mean that in a bad way. As in oh he will always come back to me type of. No. I mean like you know how some people. They be so mad that. They make permanent decisions based off of temporary emotions. Meaning they will say, oh, I will never talk to you again. And then they so mad that they would actually never talk to you again. And then a year later, they'd be like, damn, that was kind of petty. Like, I should have at least called that person back. So that's one thing about him. He'll actually call you. And then he'll have, that's when he'll have the ability to talk to you calmly. But I've noticed that you always got to reach a thousand you always got to reach a thousand with this type of nigga for him to have a decent discussion with you. It's like, why do we always have to reach a thousand for us to get anywhere? He is used to dysfunction to me. It's never that we can have a disagreement and we can sit there and have a disagreement and just agree to disagree and continue with the day. He has to poke you, provoke you, be so egotistical, be so fucking nasty towards you. And then when you blow up, it's like, oh my God, yo, you crazy, you ghetto, you acting uncivilized. And it's like, when I was calm, I wasn't getting anywhere with you. So clearly, this is the type of shit you went to. So, anyway. Motherfucker, I'm going to go through this whole can by the time this story done. So the next day comes and I told him, I said, I don't like when you compare me to other girls. I cannot help you with anything that anybody else did to you before me and you started talking. I can't help you with that. That's something that you got to work on yourself. This is the day. This is the time. You're, you're, when you're 30, that's the time. That That is a good age. You're not too young. You're not extremely old. You're not old at all, actually. But you have to... Th this, it's like he hasn't even reached the reflective age in life. He hasn't even sat down and said, Okay, this is what I do wrong in a relationship. This is what I need to work on myself. Or this is my character flaws. It's like he is so out of touch with his behavior or his actions or his demeanor in regards to... How other people perceive him or interpret or whatever in, in, in regards to a relationship. He is just like out of it. Like he could legit be acting a certain way and you can call him out on it. And you, he would swear to God that you are making up what you're making up. Ten people could tell him the same thing about himself. And for some reason or another, he's so fucking grand that all ten people lie. It's everybody else and it's not him. I'm going to get further into detail, y'all. So, we patched that up, right? Now, another time we got into something 
This was beef. Was this before? This was before the Black Peggy Bundy video. That night. Um, and this is why y'all can't believe everything I see on fucking YouTube. Because a lot of people like to act happy. You see a video. You see an edited video. You see a superficial version of what's really going on. Because sis. That night that I went out with him. We had a decent time or whatever. But even at the table. He was saying and doing certain shit that I didn't like. And that's why I really don't want him in my fucking video. So, we go to his house that night, right? It's like 1, 2 in the morning. We go to his house. And at that time, oh, matter of fact, we sat on the couch and he's rubbing my feet. Now, at the time, my feet wasn't done. So, I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm just like, oh, could you, um, could you get my feet done? Could you give me money to get my feet done, right? My feet cost $25, $30 the most. So he's like, he's not saying nothing. So now I'm like, oh, you, you, you just gonna ignore me? Motherfucker, any other day you talking my fucking head off. But today you ain't got no words when I ask you for something. So I said, uh, I said, what's up? I asked you a question. He was like, oh, that's what the last, no, matter of fact, he was like, how much is that? I said, it's $25. I said, is there a problem? So he was like, that's what the last girl did. She was using me for money. She asked me for $400. This is that and the third. So we in his mother's house. They, his parents are on vacation. So the man that I felt that fucking switch go from calm to turn the fuck up, I shut up. Because... Motherfuckers be creeping out here. This nigga is. I know this off topic, but somebody may be fall to be out here with all the little thotty waddies. All right, sis be at work, but I ain't gonna say nothing. That's none of my business, right? Who am I? I can't even keep a man. <laughs> anyway, so when I felt that I was about to turn the fuck up, I shut the fuck up because I'm in your mother's house, and I would tear this lady house up. I will pick that TV up off the wall, throw it out the window. It will be a WWF cage match in this motherfucker. Because I don't like to be compared to other women. I have nothing to do with sis that's act, that, that asks you for four, $400. Nigga, you over here rubbing, rubbing my feet about to get fucking um, paper um, cuts. I asked you, could you do my feet? That is it. So he says, oh... The last girl asked me for fun. I said, I have nothing to do with that. So I said, so every time I would say something, he would cut me off. I said, and mind you, this is how Dark and Lovely talks. He'd be like, oh, the girl's a, a woman be trying to use me. Like his whole demeanor is like, like a, a child throwing a tantrum because you ask them a question and they don't know the answer or they don't want to answer you. So it's like really like temper tantrum type of thing this is a grown ass man y'all so he's doing that and i'm like you know the red line you see on cartoon characters when they getting mad or whatever that shit is going from here, here so i'm like number one could you stop cutting me off i said so let me get this straight you've been taking me on all these dates you rent all these cars in the minute that I ask you to do my feet, it's a problem. I don't know why I said that, sis. Old boy was like, you can't tell me what to do with my money. You make it seem like what I did for you is not good enough. So, um, I got to do this and I got to do that. I said, okay. So, now I'm quiet because you missed the whole fucking point of what I said, right? So, I get quiet. He drops me home. And the food that that restaurant we ha we went to, you yeah, remember that I didn't really have an appetite. Them fucking tortillas and shit I was eating, I, ain't, I I barely touched that shit. So he's trying to give me my food when he let me out the car, cause I'm quiet now. We in his house, so he he put on his sneakers. He he threw with me supposedly, so he driving me home. So 
when I get home, he trying to offer me my food, my little doggy bag. And I was like, no, thank you. And I missed something. He did try to give me the $25. He went upstairs, got the $25, and he went to go hand it to me. But he had been so nasty to me at that point that I didn't want it. I'm not begging you, nigga. I just simply made a fucking request. Now, if you didn't have cash on you, you could have said I don't have cash on you. Um, cash on me. Or whatever it was. But for you to say, start bringing up women that's using you for this and using you for that. Homeboy, you have not seen anything that Annie has used, motherfucker. All right? I'm not even on that type of time. I can, I can take it there. That's not a fucking issue. There's men out there that don't that know will willingly be used, nigga. You the fuck? Who the fuck are you? Hey.